lot of people, they say, oh, Beat Miners did start it. They didn't, we didn't start it. It started with Q-Tip, Beat Rock, Marshall Trust. Yeah. They didn't want to, they did it first. We just did it with a whole, with different equipment. Yeah. That made it sound different. Yeah. They was using the standard, we was using the budget, the low budget. Yeah. And somehow the low budget worked. See, what it is, is a lot of, a lot of cats, who, when they went in the studio, they were using an outboard gear to do their filters. Some cats was up on filtering and the sampler, but like, you know, and it's gonna sound bananas, but I read instructions to everything I get. And, you know, it teaches you the right way to do a filter. Like, you know, we just rock like that, you know what I'm saying? I can't read, so basically, <laughs> Like, I know, like, you know, if you have an MPC and you filter, um, I forgot what it's called, but like right underneath the filter, there's something else, there's a number. Turn it up to four and five and see how your filters sound. Cause you, know you guys use the SP12 too. For yeah, we have to use the SP1200, the Kai 950. Um, he uses a 3000, I use a 2000 XL. Okay. You know what I'm saying? And he's got mad records. <laughs> mad, mad, mad records. I'm the older brother, so. I'm the dinosaur. Like, yeah. Yeah. But we understood that to survive in the game, yeah. you would have to change. Change something. Not everything. You change something. Yeah. See, I mean, to control. Sorry. Okay. Walt is the dude that he just bing, 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 yeah. bing. And yo, he does this thing. Like me, I'm the technical dude. And it's like one thing I, re I realized in 2000 and what was 2003? I was like, yo, like everybody using Pro Tools, in order to be compatible, because you know we, we still get a lot of remixes. In order to be compatible, you have to be able to adapt. You know what I'm saying? So uh, I went, I went out and bought Pro Tools and learned it. And you know, like that was at first that was our only thing. Now we got so much stuff in the crib that's advanced and all types of stuff. You know, like even now with DJ, like using Serato and everything. Like, you know, um, before that, I was rocking CDJs, you know what I'm saying? Like, I was one of the first, I'm not going to say I was the first, because I wasn't. I was one of the first dudes to really take the CDJs to the next level, with cutting and scratching and all that. And, you know, technology, you, you know, in order to not, in order to not fall down by the wayside, in order to fall off, you have to be up on what's going on in technology. If you do not accept what's going on with technology, you will be you'll be labeled a dinosaur and you'll be left behind to die. <laughs> nah, he he's good because I'm I'm a, I'm gonna learn all the stuff so that he you know and I'll let him know what's good and what's bad. You know, but I'm gonna tell you right now, a lot of people that fell off. One of the main reasons they fell off was because of technology. Yeah. each his own. You know, sometimes a sample can take a record to a different level. Sometimes it can't. You know what I'm saying? I mean, I'm not hating anybody who does the keyboard thing. You, that's your niche. Go with it. You yeah. know what I'm saying? But, you know, like, hip-hop is all about taking a record, bringing the record back, the one part of the record, so the MC can rap off of that one part. You know what I'm saying? But you don't have to do that manually anymore. You could sample the record. You know, so... I'm not hating on anybody who, like I said, is doing the keyboard thing. I mean, it's to each his own. Yeah, Swiss cats out there doing it, right? Swiss Beats is one of them. I mean, he samples, but majority of his stuff was keyboards, and yo, majority of that shit was hot. Yeah? Yeah. Have any of um, your, you guys' records ever been compromised because you know you couldn't clear a sample? Or? Oh, that's our life story. Yeah. <laughs> yeah that's our life story. Um, Goes back to the, to the Black Moon album. There was some stuff on the Black Moon album that we couldn't get cleared. Yeah. Uh, there was some stuff on Smith and Wesson. Matter of fact, there was a song, a total song that we just scrapped off of Deshaun. Oh, really? Uh, not move but the money. We couldn't yeah. get the sample clear. Yeah. Start, yeah. The star of the story, um, he went. Yep, Rod Temple was not yeah. trying to hear it. Damn. Well, he let Tribe Called Crash use this story. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> that, and over the years, I've learned it's really, if a dude says no, 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 no. Yeah. You need that backing person yeah. to step up and say, oh, look out for me. And they'll go, okay, I'll do it. You know what I'm saying? Because Rob Tucker Tim kept saying no, no to everybody. No, 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 no. Yeah. LL Cool J uh, samples Lady in My Life, Michael Jackson. Yeah. 
for his album. That's right. He said, yeah. okay. And that was a big Russell shit. stepped in. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. You know, now, and one thing you look at, if you look at samples nowadays, a lot of people are greedy for money. Yeah. So I feel that anything can be sampled if you have the right amount of money. Yeah. That, that's what, we have a prime example. Um, we did one of Eminem's first records, right? On Rockin'. We did that record. It's on Sound Bombing too, Any Man. Yes. Right? yes. Yeah, yeah, right? Any Man. So oh, Richard awesome. Rudolph, uh, we sampled many Ripperton, many Ripperton songs. So Richard Rudolph, he knew that. Like, an artist knows when you sample their record. They know, they just sit back and watch. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? So he knew that. He saw that Eminem was blown up because, what was the first one? My Name Is? Yeah. yeah. My Name Is was Heat. Yeah. He said, yo, whoever this Eminem dude is, he's getting paper. And he sampled my song. I'm going out. Our record didn't really, it was an underground record. Right, it wasn't he even on the same album. Exactly. Yeah. He didn't care. He said, Eminem. All he saw was Eminem. Right. He went for it. I mean, it's his record. Yeah. But we peeped it. Like, oh, okay. Because if Eminem didn't blow up, we, that record would have went right under the radar. Do most like artists you sample, are they kind of like, you know, greedy with like the publishing rights and everything? Like they try to take um, like 100%? Like, not everybody. Yeah. What about the Dream yeah. Oh, I'm yeah, for I'm gonna tell you right now who is one of the most generous people. Uh, George Clinton. Yeah. Like, he was willing to give us individual yeah. sessions. Yeah, and George, we sample, what George Clinton does is the particular piece that I sampled, uh, he, like, you call, you, you call him up, you hit him up, right? And he clears it. Yeah. And he charges you one cent for each copy you sell. Oh, wow. And he gets like, you know, of course you divide the publishing up, but it's equal though. He makes it equal among the, like if it's five people, yeah. um, getting published and he's the sixth. Like he, the way he sets it up is so right. And like, you know, it's so like for a cat, like him to do something like that, like a lot of cats should learn from him. Yeah. You know, like he's real cool, you know. But isn't there like a company like that bought like a lot of that Bridgeport publishing and now? Oh, this was what I sampled was an old Bridgeport. Oh, okay. okay. He still has stuff that he owns. As a matter of fact, he has these others. He has this other series called From This to That. Okay. And this I don't know if you can find it now, but it was a, it was an album he put out, and it was just parts of sessions mm. of him and his band playing. Mm. And he was like, "Yo, I'm putting these out so we can sample and make music." Put up.